I want to start off here with uh, some good news, or uh, positive notes, I should say. Uh, and then we're going to end the, new, end the show on some, some bad news. But, but good news first. So I uh, saw this on the Twitter, and I thought it was worth sharing. This is from uh, a surgeon. He said, there's a lot of bad stuff about being in a hospital right now. Neglecting long-term patients, watching healthy people die in overwhelming numbers, putting yourself at risk, isolating the family, etc. But once you get past that stuff, this is actually an awesome time to be a doctor. We are all getting to do exactly what we've always wanted. Be clinicians and use our judgment. See a problem, solve a problem, tell a friend, watch it catch around the ICU. No administrator asking you to bill for it or what the protocol is. Blank the paperwork, blank the regulations, just do the right thing. And for once, the higher-ups know to step back and let the experts work. You can't believe the energy that you see around the ICUs. Everyone, nurses, doctors, janitors. Real quick, I love the video. I think we played it a couple weeks ago of a group of doctors and nurses applauding the uh, housekeeping custodial staff, which is great, right? There's no hierarchy right now. Like, everyone in the hospital is doing this together. Everyone has an important role to play. And that's exciting. That's um, it's a, there's like an energy about that. So everyone, nurses, doctors, janitors, are learning, innovating, sharing freely, helping each other. The, by the way, again, the janitors have such an important role. They always do, but more so now and, and very obvious. And the hierarchy is still there, but it's very much different. One of our junior residents put together this ICU procedure team and did the legwork to make it happen, and now she's functionally my boss. <laughs> it's a very valuable lesson about leadership, I think. I'm not saying we don't need administrators and higher-ups or rules or regulations. The captain of the ship helps navigate it on a long journey, the scope and length of which is too long for the sailors to contemplate. But in times of crisis, a leader should be a calm voice of honest, candid information and work to support the local experts who know how to keep the ship from capsizing. Don't tell the engine room how to do their job. Let them tell you and then give them the tools. I love that. Have you been a moment, have you ever had a moment in your life where it's not that you're busy, right? It's not that you're like just frantically busy, that's not it. But you're doing something so important with urgency to the point where everyone's just clicking on all cylinders. And there's just something organic and, and smooth. I guess the, the trendy like Silicon Valley word for it would be the flow state. Have you heard this before? You're operating in a flow state. It's a very Tim Ferriss kind of word, but a flow state is just maximum focus. And, and I think the defining characteristic of a flow state isn't just maximum productivity, but it's maximum creativity. And that's what this doctor here, the surgeon was talking about. He's like, we're figuring things out on the fly here. And it doesn't matter who comes up with the idea. It doesn't matter who gets the credit. And you need to be creative in moments like that. And that's exciting. It's fun. And yes, of course, our doctors and, and nurses and everyone's overwhelmed. Um, I mean, unprecedented for this length of time. But to have uh, moments or entire shifts of, of flow state, everyone working together without some bureaucrat chiming in, telling you what to do and how to do it, what you can't do, what you must do. Everyone instead just doing what they love. And that's to save lives, <laughs> very important thing. And everyone working for the same mission, whatever it takes, learning at the same time. Like that's, a, that's a really beautiful thing in the midst of the tragedy of it all. It reminded me of this quote, one of my all-time favorites from Abigail Adams. She wrote this to her husband. Obviously, this is during the revolution. These are the times in which a genius would wish to live. It is not, not in the still calm of life that great characters are formed. The habits of a vigorous mind are formed in contending with difficulties. Great necessities call out great virtues. And when a mind is raised and animated by scenes that engage the heart, then those qualities which would otherwise lay dormant wake into life and form the character of the hero and the statesman. You know, I'm reminded yesterday we talked to that nurse, Kelly, from Michigan, who deployed her 19th deployment with Samaritan's Purse. And she's in Italy. She's been in Italy for a month. And I remember I asked her, I said, why, why are you there? Why are you doing this? 
And she gave maybe the most articulate answer to any question I've ever asked in my entire life when it comes to motive. And it was, it's on the YouTube, the first YouTube page. You can watch the whole interview, it's fantastic. But she had some amazing line like, oh, I'm, I'm using this, I can't turn away because I have skills that can be used to save people's lives, glorify God, and spread his kingdom. Slater Crusaders, thanks for watching the first on YouTube. If you want more, like, subscribe, we got plenty.